Michael Thunder coming to you from the White Dragon Tea Room in Durango, Colorado. This morning I am going to talk about how to brew Sencha tea. Sencha tea is quintessentially Japanese tea. It's served when you go to visit the, the temple, it's served whenever you go to visit somebody at their home. Um, it's just a, a way of establishing rapport and uh, uh, relationship through tea. So there's several things that are peculiar about uh, Sencha. Uh, the first one is the pot. The pot has a little tiny screen in here to make sure that the small leaves, these are small trimmed up leaves that make the consist from which the Sencha is made, um, don't get through there and get into your cup. So that's one thing that's a little bit different about Sencha. You can do it with a sieve at home too, but this is more styling. This is a Kyushu style pot. It has the handle that comes out the side. Of all the different teas, this probably is the one which you can have the most fun with, with stuff. So what I'm going to be using today is a, probably an 18th century Amari cup from Kyoto. Uh, it's from the Amari kilns, but I, I got it out of Kyoto. So um, it's, it's really fun, because and they also mix and match. They don't, uh, they don't do it the same. This is a sake cup that I use for Sencha, made by Shige Morioka, who's a Japanese potter. And this is a little bowl made by Adam Field, who was a local artist, and it has feldspar in it. He used clay from the um, tailing piles out in the Sierra Madre from the gold rush days. He's recycling that. So you can have a lot of fun choosing your cups. They're usually small like this. You just get a bit uh, in doing that. I usually put in at least a good-sized four-finger pinch of sencha into the pot. This is Uji, and this particular one that we're doing this morning is Kabuse. It's from south of Kyoto. Got a couple others to show you, but uh, it's a beautiful green leaf. It's very vegetal, this particular one, and uh, quite delicious. Uh, you put your tea. I'm using a caddy this morning because we're filming. But you can put your tea directly in there just by pinching it out of the container and putting it right in. Okay, so the water in this thermos is at about 1, 180. There's a little Japanese guy that said that he puts the boiling water in his thermos before he goes to bed at night, and the next morning, by the time he gets out to the field, he is a, a tea grower, the water is a perfect temperature for, uh, for Gikuro. Um, it's a nice idea, I like thinking about it like that. So basically, we're going to put water on leaves. One of the only rules that you have to stick with on this is that you do not, under any circumstances, leave water on the leaves after you've poured it off, because it will get bitter. If it gets bitter, dump it out and start over again with the same leaves. So you want to do about a cupful. If I overfill this cup, it'll be too hot to pick up. And then uh, if I'm doing it for somebody else, I'll think I don't like them. Because if you don't like somebody, you fill the cup up to the top. If you like them, you fill it about here so that they can get a hold of it without burning their fingers. Okay, I only do about a 10, 15 second steep on the first one. This would be good for about nine, 10 steeps. That is to say, putting water on it nine or 10 times. This is uh, colored up beautifully. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a nice dark green. Oh man, that is so good. These are just fabulous. I, um, I can't tell you uh, enough about the delicious quality of this particular tea, especially if you get into it, you can buy several different ones. This is a Gikuro. This one was covered for the last 21 days of its life before it was picked. They cover the fields with mats. Uh, sometimes they use the old, they use the old style mats, uh, which are bamboo, and then they put straw on top of the bamboo or uh, something else just to break the light. The leaf develops very slowly. It has more characteristics of the tea leaf than a, tea, a leaf that is hit by the spring rains. It opens up real fast. It gets kind of leathery. So these are the, some of the best teas in the world. The Kiko is the most expensive one. Several doctors send their, their patients in who have cancer. This one also is purported, if you drink it every day, because they say everybody has cancer cells, when you get old you won't get cancer. That's what they say, so I think it might be worth a shot. Uh, I'm doing the Kabuse. The Uroshino is the only other one I want to show you this morning. The Uroshino is actually stored for almost a year. It's almost like uh, the new Beaujolais, and then they release it in the fall. So this is the Uroshino for this year, stored, and it gives it a, a kind of an aged quality. Oh, that's it.